started a Facebook Live. Sorry, I should have anticipated that request. That's all I got right there. call from the Shelby County Department of Human Resources in regard to a child abuse or neglect investigation. Uh, upon arrival at the hospital, this child had been taken to a local hospital. For arrival at the hospital, doctors noted that the child was severely, chronically malnourished, dehydrated, suffering from acute respiratory distress, shock, hypothermia, hypothyroid, and that he was close to death. Um, the child remains gravely ill at this time and faces a long and difficult recovery and an uncertain prognosis. Um, all of us at the Helena Police Department keep him in our thoughts and prayers and we ask that you do the same. After several hours of interviews, evidence collection, and many other tasks, investigators took the child's adopted parents, Richard and Cynthia Kelly of Helena, into custody. And yesterday afternoon, warrants were obtained upon them for aggravated child abuse. I'd like to take this opportunity to publicly thank Shelby County District Attorney Jill Lee, Assistant District Attorney Roger Hepburn, and all of the employees of the Shelby County District Attorney's Office for their assistance on this case. Um, I'd like to publicly commend the Shelby County Department of Human Resources for their attention to detail and their tireless work on behalf of this child. Um, and I would also like to say how proud I am of the Helena Police Department officers who have worked and will continue to work on this case for the foreseeable future. Investigator Sean Bozar, Crime Scene Sergeant Josh Lindsay, Officer Amanda Davis, Sergeant Michael Johnson, and Crime Scene Investigator Michael Nelson have all worked tirelessly on what for many of them is the most disturbing case that they have seen in their careers. The city of Helena, the Helena Police Department, and I am lucky to have them in the Helena Police Department. Um, I will remind you all that this investigation is not complete and will not be for some time. Because of that, 
there are many questions that I cannot answer. Um, I ask you to be understanding and patient with, the, with us on that. Um, but in, after saying that, I'll open up the floor to a few questions. Chief, you've been in law enforcement for about 20 years. Uh, talk about, you said you're really passionate about this case. Talk about what it did for you just seeing this 14-year-old condition. He was in. Um, you just struggle to wrap your head around it. Um, I suppose that's the, that's the best thing I can say. Um, like m most of the people here at the Illinois Police Department, I'm a parent. And I just struggle to wrap your head around it. Can you tell us if you've been able to talk to the boy, to the victim? Um, at this time, we have not. Is, he, is that because he is unable to speak at this time? Um, well, I just don't want to subject him to anything at this, at this point in time. Uh, I won't say whether or not I, I think he could or could not speak or, or whatever. I just, um, there's a time and a place that's appropriate for everything. And I don't think that time and place has been appropriate at, at this time. Can you clear up, okay, there's about who lives in that house, who doesn't live in that house? Um, living in that home at the time uh, that, that this took place was the, the, the two people who have been charged, um, the child that is our victim and two other young adults, uh, one of whom is a sibling, an adoptive sibling. Um, the two people, um, the two young adults are not juveniles, they're employed, they're, they're safe, they're, they're, there's no harm to them at all. They are not charged with any crime. No ages? Um, they are, I think, 19 and 21. Is there a so reason only one is a sibling? Only one is a sibling. What's the other one? Um, an acquaintance, I suppose. That'd be the best way for me to classify that. Can you tell us if it's the male or the female that's a sibling? Um, the, the unrelated person is, a, is the male. Okay. Is, a male. No. is there a reason why they would not be charged having knowledge of this situation? I won't get into what they did or did not know or what they may or may not have told us. Um, but this particular statute in the state of Alabama requires that one of the elements of the crime is that the person who is believed to have committed the crime of aggravated child abuse be a responsible person as defined by Alabama law, which means they are the person who is responsible for the care of a child. There's reports that those two had ever been abused in their past by the counties? Mm -hmm. Not to my knowledge. You know that I'm going to feel better than any of us. Talk about why is this charge aggravated child abuse and not something else? Because it seems from the all you said so far, this is pretty bad. It seems it should be more than child abuse. Well, I'm not an attorney, um, but Alabama law provides for two classifications of child abuse. There is child abuse, which is a class C felony and aggravated child abuse, which is a class B felony, which it falls in line with assault first, which is also a class B felony. You know, other various, it's the second highest classification of crime in the state of Alabama. So and it, it, I know it, it may seem, the title of it may seem a little whatever, but it's, um, it is the second highest classification of crime in the state. Class B felony carries a sentence of what, 10 to 20? I think. I think the range of sentencing on that um, is 2 to 20. 2 to 20. Chief, what does it look like inside the house, specifically in that basement? Um, I'm not going to get into the investigative details of this at this time. Um, it's uh, We're not going to try this case in, in a court of public opinion or in the news media. Um, and I, I don't want to say or do anything that would jeopardize um, legal proceedings going forward. But can you confirm the age of 14 years and the weight of 55 pounds? Can you confirm that? Um, I will confirm that he was um, 14 years old and that he was um, severely malnourished and undersized. I I'll be honest with you and tell you, I don't know exactly. Um, or I don't have anything in front of me exactly. Does 55, approximately 55 sound right? I would say that based on my visual, my looking at him, yes, that would probably be somewhere in that range. And I know you read some of the uh, medical stuff that we got in the case, but kind of 
paint a picture of the condition when the officers got the hand on the bullets and said, but what was it like when you guys were in the car? Just what did you see? What was visualized? Um, again, uh, that, that falls into one of those things where I'm, I don't want to, for lack of a better term, dramatize this case any more than I absolutely can. I will just tell you, he's, he was and remains at this point gravely ill. Carol, did you have another question? Um, neighbors have said, oh, well, we've seen him out cutting the lawn as late as two months ago. We thought he was eight or 10, but he was out. Does that sound like that's accurate? I mean, was he in and out of the basement? Was he, um, do you have any idea at this point? It is our belief that um, he spent an extended period of time in what I would term as kind of forced isolation. As far as what neighbors may or may not have seen or what he may or may not have been doing, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't speak to the accuracy or veracity of that. And where does the investigation stand right now? I know you say it's far from being over, but are you guys done at the home and it's just a matter of talking and fact checking or do you guys have to go physically do something else at the home? Um, there's always stuff to physically do. Um, there'll, there'll be subpoenas to be served. There'll be records to pour through. There, there's just a lot of things that, that will have to be done. Now, the couple themselves, um, what do you know about, were they both employed, only one of them employed, and also, you talked about the number of people living in the residence. How many children did they have together, a, a biologically or adopted? Um, they, they had two children, both adopted. And I say children, one of them is now an adult. Um, and um, as far as their employment, um, it's my understanding that Cynthia was not employed um, and that Richard has historically been employed as uh, some, something to do with computers, uh, either IT or programmer or something, and, uh, but that he is now temporarily, has been temporarily unemployed for a short, a very short period of time. Chief, two questions for you. Yes, um, the first, when you said forced isolation, what does that mean? I'm just gonna kinda let that speak for itself. Um, and, and not, without, I, I can't go into the great detail on what it would mean in this particular case, but um, you know, isolation means, um, you know, isolated. And uh, forced means kept there. So when you, I guess I wonder, when you say forced, are you saying like he was handcuffed? <coughs> I don't have any evidence that he was um, bodily restrained. Was it beaten? I don't have any evidence. We don't have any evidence that would substantiate that. Chief. My second question, if I may. Um, friends and family that knew that, that he was adopted, did folks know? And if so, how do you think that they were able to? Because I read an estimation of two years that you believe that he was in this. Now, I won't say, uh, I won't put a time period on it, I'll just say an extended period of time, and as far as what friends and family may have, may or may not have known, that's part of what we will do going forward, is try to determine, um, you know, what someone knew, not in the intention of charging anyone else, but just trying to determine how we got to this point. Yes, I was going to say, real estate records show that they've lived in Helena for the last 18 years. What kind of citizens have they been, as far as you know? Um, we don't, the police department doesn't have any records of ever having dealt with them. Um, you know, as far as what kind of citizens they were, I, I really don't know. Yeah. Is there any indication that the victim is special needs prior to the injury or the neglect? Or the yeah, I, and that's again one of those things I don't really want to get into. I would say that he was challenged uh, in, in some way. Um, hey Chief, if you would, you might have done this in the first part, but can you recap? We know you guys were there foul. What did the uh, officers go there for? I mean, was there something from the HR first that you happened to find? Yeah, this? yeah we, we didn't understand. We didn't find this situation in his home. We responded to, to, a, to a local hospital um, once DHR notified us. that the, the hospital notified DHR upon his arrival. DHR notified the police department upon their arrival. And you guys? And we went. And we went. And we found out, oh, right. he's been in the basement. Um, we, 
based on a lot of interviews and, uh, and evidence collection at the home, like I said, we, we believe that he was kept in, in isolation and denied basic medical care, nourishment, and, and things that sustain life. Are you angry? Um, I don't know that angry is exactly the word. Um, upset, frustrated, and mostly I just um, feel sorry for this young man. Do we know if he was attending a local school or was he homeschooled? Um, it is our belief that he was homeschooled. Um, he was not enrolled in any of the Helena schools and we believe that um, he had been homeschooled. Do you know if the daughter had been homeschooled as well? Um, I believe so. Now, just to go back to this real quick, this, this is what so many people are asking about. And I understand that legally nobody else is responsible for the victim except for the parents. But so many people are saying, is there not a moral obligation to tell what's going on? Is there? And the only question, the only answer I can give you to that is the uh, business of the police department and in fact the criminal justice system as a whole is legal obligations. What people's moral obligations are are between them and their conscience and them and their faith and them and their family. Um, and uh, you know, as to whether or not there was a moral obligation there or whatever, I will I'll let people make their own determinations on that. That's all the time I got for questions today, y'all. I appreciate you coming. And uh, again, I ask that you keep this young man in your thoughts and prayers. Um, and uh, we'll just we'll move forward with our investigation and uh, and do the very best we can for him. Thank you. Thank you.